Now we'll look at a proof of the product rule. So function f is a product of two functions. Well, according to the definition of a derivative, f primed, the derivative of f, will be the limit as delta x approaches zero of g of x plus delta x times h of x plus delta x minus function g times function h and all of that over delta x. Now this is quickly going to get very cumbersome so I'm going to switch, switch to the more streamlined notation which is this y equals u times v and if you think about these on the graphs u and v are both functions of x so we'll say this is u and this is v and x is the independent variable in both cases and uh, these are two functions it doesn't really matter what they look like because we're going to be working out the general case but what you should see is that if you have a little increment here delta x that's going to correspond to a little increment here delta u and a little increment here on this function delta x will correspond to a little increment here delta v so I'm just pointing out that algebraically it makes sense to refer to these quantities delta u and delta v and those are the quantities that show up associated with a, a small change in x so here's the proof y is equal to uv and u and v are both differentiable functions of x so dy dx or y primed however you want to say it is going to be the limit as delta x approaches zero of u plus delta u times v plus delta v minus uv and all of that is over delta x now to take the limit let's try to simplify this a little bit so let's work this out we'll have the limit as delta x approaches zero and we'll do a foil operation right here on that a product of two binomials and we get uv plus u delta v plus v delta u plus delta u delta v and then we still have this minus uv right over here and all of that is over delta x now these guys cancel out the uv and the minus uv now look at what's left I have three terms in the numerator here so I could break this up into three fractions that are all added together and I'm going to distribute my limit across those three fractions so I end up with the limit as delta x approaches zero of this one right here u delta v over delta x plus the limit as delta x approaches zero of v delta u over delta x that was just the next fraction and then I'll do the third which is this plus the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta u delta v over delta x now this is cool think about what happens to each of these three things as delta x approaches zero as it says in the limit in each case well as delta x approaches zero this delta x gets infinitely small and so does this delta v and what that is that delta v over delta x that simply becomes dv dx that's the derivative of v with respect to the with respect to x times u so this first term right here the limit as delta x approaches zero of u delta v over delta x simply becomes u times dv dx the second term has the v and as these guys become infinitely small, the delta u and the delta x, we end up with dv dx, du dx. So this is the v times the du dx. And then the key insight here is to recognize that this term, 
what happens to it as delta x approaches zero is that this term becomes zero. So we'll just make a note of that by saying that term goes to zero. And you can understand why if you realize that there are two infinitely small quantities up top. As delta x approaches zero, my delta u is becoming infinitely small and my delta v is becoming infinitely small. Delta x is two, but you should be able to see that the numerator is becoming smaller faster. So just think about this in numerical terms for a second. If I have something really small, like 0 0.001, and I multiply it by something really small, 0 0.001, the result is something really, really small. This is 0 0.000001. So multiplying two tiny things together results in something very tiny. And in this expression right here, delta x is getting really small, but delta u and delta v are also getting really small. And so that numerator is two really small things being multiplied together. So the numerator is getting smaller faster than the denominator. And that's why as delta x approaches zero, this whole term becomes zero. And then this is what we're left with right here. And this could simply be written as u v primed plus v u primed. And that's exactly what we had earlier. u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Or the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. I think it's worth uh, taking a minute here to look at Leibniz's proof of the product rule as he explained it in a letter to mathematician John Wallace. And um, I'll read to you what Leibniz wrote. He said, it is useful to consider to consider quantities infinitely small such that when their ratio is solved they may not be considered zero. So what he's talking about is something like this dy dx. Both of these quantities are infinitely small but their ratio is not zero. So he says it is useful to consider quantities infinitely small such that when their ratio is solved they may not be considered zero but which are rejected as often as they occur with quantities incompar incomparably greater. Thus, if we have x plus dx, then dx is rejected. And what he means by that is dx is infinitely small, and so compared to something like x, we can just ignore it. So if we have x plus dx, then dx is rejected. Similarly, we cannot have x dx and dx dx standing together, as x dx is incomparably greater than dx dx. So if we had an expression like this, Leibniz is saying that term would get rejected because this term, even though there's an infinitely small quantity here, here there are two infinitely small quantities. So this term is much, much smaller than this one. And then Leibniz says, hence if we are to differentiate uv, and that's what he's talking about here, taking the derivative of u times v, we write this u plus dv times v plus du minus uv. And then he works this out and the uv's cancel and he rejects this. This is what he was talking about as he explained to Wallace. We reject in, uh, infinitely small quantities if they're standing together. So by rejecting he means uh, just considering it to be negligibly small compared to the other terms. And he's left with v du plus u dv. And that's how Leibniz explained it to Wallace. And that's Leibniz's notation there. And I think it's interesting to note that if we take Leibniz's formula right down here, and we just divide both sides by dx. So if I put a divide by dx on the left and on the right, what we're left with is the derivative with respect to x of uv is equal to v times du dx plus u times dv dx. So the way Leibniz wrote it is almost identical to the way we write it today. And in fact, this notation, the, the differential notation using a, a lowercase d and these little quantities to represent these infinitely small quantities, that's, that comes from Leibniz. And you see him employing that notation here.